and welcome to the February issue of NTV. We're in downtown Seattle this month in front of the City Light building on 3rd Avenue. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Larry Johnson, electrical helper with the Crew 53 Constructors at North Service Center. Well, there's lots of coming and going down here at the City Light building, and we're going to take a look at some of it this month. That's right. People are on the move as space is rearranged here in the City Light building and next door in the 1111 3rd Avenue building. Now, Larry, I understand that you've worked for the utility for about five and a half years, and you have a hobby people are always asking you about. You're right, Sharon. I play soft tip darts regionally, and I'm just about to start a new season now. We caught up with Larry during his morning break at the Broad Street substation, where he does much of his work, taking a few minutes to sharpen his skill. It's a fun hobby. You should try it sometime. I really should, because I know what they say about all work and no play. So it's nice to find out a little bit more about you, too. And here at City Light, we're in the process of finding out more about their 1993 employee survey results. We've been in a climate of change at the utility for quite a while now, and that does create stress, but things are looking up. The 93 survey feedback shows a slight upward trend in the five of the six department-wide issues identified in 1992. While concern for people, communication flow, decision-making, and job reward continue to be areas of concern. All except job reward showed slight increases over the 1992 results. Employees, individual, and group performance continue to be department strengths. Two areas that are less in focus for employees now than they appeared in 1992 are understanding the utility's future direction and understanding City Light's financial situation. Divisions are continuing to meet and work on their own issues and action plans. In late February, department-wide issues resulting from this survey cycle will be determined and a status report on each division's action plans is expected in late March. The scene here in the lobby of the City Light building really hasn't changed much in many years. It's still circa 1970. But people are coming and going to and from different locations these days. Right, Larry. Employees are on the move, and about 400 employees are shifting their workspaces in a series of moves that will span several more months. The goal is to consolidate work units, bringing them together to increase work efficiency. Here are some of the highlights. Strategic technology and planning, which went from the ninth floor City Light building to the 23rd floor next door. Human resources from 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 9th here to the 5th floor 1111 building. Mechanical engineering moves up and over from 3rd floor here to 14th floor over there. And finance, which goes straight across from 3rd floor here to 3rd floor 1111 building. Energy Management Services will eventually consolidate all their staff into the City Light Building, and things should be a bit less crowded for everyone in their new space. Packing, moving, and settling in will continue through spring. This has been a big project for the facilities management crew. Well, it's been a little hectic because we haven't had as much time to plan. Basically, uh, there's other work that we do for the utility in, in the service centers and in the city light building that's unrelated to moving. A lot of it is, but uh, lately it's just been uh, go, go, go. And um, a lot of times we get there and there's things that uh, weren't, we didn't expect, like the freight elevator breaking down and having that repaired. Um, it's been very busy. And it's, it's uh, as, far as compared to the past, it's, this is the busiest that uh, we've ever been since I've been in the Furniture and Equipment Group. The Corporate Communications Division is now located here on the first floor of the City Light Building, very close to our graphics and video. And the employee store is now located around the corner in room 123A. In case you haven't visited in a while, the store is a benefit for employees offering electrical supplies from light bulbs and batteries to washers and water heaters at a discount price. Recently, another group of city lighters were on the move with a job that involved teamwork and customer service. 
They installed a 750 kVA transformer for the Richmark Company, a large printing business that serves a national market. The new bug, called that because of the humming noise it makes when operating, weighed in at 10,310 pounds. It needed to be moved down a ramp, requiring extra time, equipment, concentration, and coordination. Crews included Underground Crew 351, a carpenter crew, engineering, a labor crew, pole crew, and support for material supply. At the end, City Light had a satisfied customer and worker satisfaction in completing a safe and efficient task. Crew Chief Jerry Lawson says they do a few jobs like this a year, and they're already looking forward to the next one. These crews always enjoy a challenge. Speaking of challenging work, you might say this job was a blast, as explosives were used to remove large rocks above the Diablo Dam South Access Road. The road leads to the Diablo Lake Boathouse, and Skagit employees traverse it daily as part of the trip to Ross Powerhouse. The rocks above, some the size of Volkswagens, were falling onto the road and the bridge. A maintenance check showed that the lower bridge had holes in the deck. Studies showed the hillside to be dangerous, with life-threatening potential if large rocks were to fall. So the rocks needed to be scaled back and removed. Large rocks were blasted away. The smaller rocks were removed with pry bars. Ice expands the rocks and the spring thaw shrinks them making them likely to crack, so after the winter freeze and the spring thaw, work will continue. The project was coordinated by civil engineering. This job needs to be done about once every 10 years. Our right-of-ways traverse over 200 miles, carrying our transmission lines through urban and rural areas on the way from the Skagit. Although some of the right-of-way has been designated for recreational use in the past, City Light maintains a policy of keeping the right-of-way ready to accommodate future expansion of our service. The Washington State Growth Management Act and the National Energy Policy Act of 1992 require utility corridors to be more accessible to other utilities. With citizen opposition to locating power lines and building new facilities in communities growing, the need to preserve rights-of-way for future options remains a high priority. We're in the midst of another mild winter, and that means snowpack, precipitation, and the effects on the utility business are being considered. While snowpack is less than last year, reservoirs have more water due to shrewd power purchases. However, it is likely that we'll have problems meeting 1994 non-firm revenue forecasts. Options are being considered, including more internal budget cuts. Lots of rainfall in the next couple of months will help, but more internal cost cuts are the likely outcome. You know, in the 90s, diversity has become the buzzword. That's right. In Seattle City Light, it has true meaning for two groups recently recognized at the first citywide diversity award ceremony. The pre-apprentice training team of Skip Allen, John Harris, and Alice Lockridge were recognized for their commitment to quality training and diversity. They've had great success in training women to fill the non-traditional role of line worker. A standing room only crowd was on hand to celebrate the success of the power system and substation engineering unit, who include representatives from all over the map. They've blended together with harmony and appreciation of each other's individual qualities. Congratulations to these two teams and the other city lighters who were nominated for this year's awards. Well, Sharon, I guess we've come to the end of another NTV. That's right. Thank you for all of your story ideas and enthusiasm. You can call 684-3008 with your story ideas in the future. And Larry, thanks for sharing the stage with me this night. It's been a lot of fun. As we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some quiet pictures. One of our feathered friends is captured through the lens of videographer Tony Hopkins' camera along the shores of the Skagit. So we'll see you next month. I'm Karen Bennett. And I'm Larry Johnson for Network on Television. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.